All right, excellent, welcome back. Okay, so we ended up with the blood brain barrier and I'd like to go on to the functions of some of the structures of the brain. So to orient you to the location of the different parts, I'll show you a sagittal section of the brain. So the medulla oblongata is this part here. The medulla, some people sometimes just call it the medulla, but the long name is the medulla oblongata. It has an oblong kind of structure and it has many functions, but as a part of the brain stem, its functions are more along the survival lines. So functions of the medulla, medulla oblongata. Well, it's about three, it's about a three centimeter extension of the spinal cord, of the spinal cord. So it's just a smallish extension. And one of its functions is just simply to contain ascending and descending tracts. So it contains ascending and descending tracts. It also is the origin of some um, cranial nerves. So it contains the nuclei of cranial nerves, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And we're going to look at the functions of the cranial nerves individually later on. But let's just talk about the general functions of the medulla, which as somebody rightfully said, is breathing. So it contains the respiratory center. that controls the rate of breathing, the rate and depth of breathing. I should write that down. Rope controls um, rate and depth of breathing. So when you're exercising, that's when your breathing rate and the depth of your breathing increases. There's a center known as the vasomotor center. So what do your muscles need in particular when you're exercising or doing strenuous movement? What do your muscles need? There's a few things. Oxygen, good. And, and oxygen is required. And what liquid brings the oxygen to the muscles. What liquid connective tissue? Blood. Excellent. So in order to increase amount of blood, vessels are dilated. So the vasomotor center adjusts um, blood vessel diameter, either constricting or dilating. Excellent. The cardiac center adjusts the rate and force of the heartbeat. Also, there are some reflex centers. in the medulla. So 
your reactions, for example, to poisonous food will be gagging, say, uh, vomiting. Your reaction to even just the smell of food is to salivate. So these are functions uh, instrumental in survival. So uh, in the case of uh, poisonous food, gagging, vomiting. In the case of uh, the smell of food or tasting food, salivation. Even um, sweating in the case of overheating. Mm, what else? Coughing. Coughing in the case of accidentally breathing in something instead of swallowing it. Swallowing. All these basic functions for, for survival through uh, eating food, essentially. But also there are some functions for the, for the movement of the tongue. Does the movement of the tongue have anything to do with eating? Does the movement of the tongue have anything to do with eating? It does in that, you know, you chew your food and your tongue moves it from side to side. So from left side to your right side, your jaws are fairly strong muscle. So you have the capacity of grinding and your food, but in order to swallow it, it can't be Good, yeah, it forms a bolus. It can't be this enormous bolus because you know you choke on that. So rather your tongue forms a bolus of the size that your esophagus can handle. So movement of the tongue and the head also. Yeah, the medulla. And to orient you, to a cross section of the medulla oblongata. Here are some of the tracts. Uh, the gracile nuclei are here. The uh, spinal cerebellar tract here in the columns. Uh, where's another tract? Another tract is here. Mm, tectospinal tract. There are a lot of nuclei. The nucleus of the vagus nerve, the vagus nerve, which is your 12th cranial nerve, I believe, maybe it's your 10th. Uh, your trigeminal nerve. So the trigeminal nerve, your uh, a cranial nerve, which is the one that the dentist freezes when you go to the dentist. Um, yeah, the hypoglossal nerve, another cranial nerve. The pyramids refer to the structure of the medulla. These are tracts within the structure, but they look a little bit like a pyramid. Uh, the olive is also referring to uh, what that structure looks like, a little bit like an olive. So uh, this is what I was going to do with this. Oh, I forgot. I'm going to color. Okay, so I'm going to erase all of these. Sorry about that. <laughs> I should remember my notes to myself before I do this. Okay, tracts, tracts in red. Is a tract. It's a tract. These are the tracts, uh, ascending or descending tracts. The tectospinal is a descending tract. Uh, for example, the spinal cerebellar, that's an ascending tract from the spine to the cerebellum. Nuclei, there's a nucleus, a nucleus, 
um, nucleus. So the nuclei are the points of synapses. And the tracts are bundles of axons. Bundles of axons. And the medulla lies inferior to the pons. So to orient you to the pons, it's here between the medulla and the midbrain. That's its location. So this slide is, is a good slide to show the origins of the cranial nerves. Uh, so for example, uh, the optic nerve ocular motor nerve, the trochlear nerve, those nerves are all um, concerned with movement of the eye. The trigeminal, abducens, facial, vestibular, cochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal. Uh, the first one is the olfactory, which interestingly isn't shown on here. So one is the olfactory. It isn't shown on there because it's in the frontal lobe. <laughs> yeah, so that is the location of the pawns. It's here. Also instrumental in some more primitive kinds of functions. Um, containing nuclei concerned with, as we said, sleep, uh, hearing, balance, respiration, swallowing, bladder control, posture, facial expression, so it is the origin of the, the facial cranial nerve as well. So the cranial nerves are the origins of these cranial nerves, five, six, seven, and eight. So the cra these cranial nerves begin or end in the pons, in the pons. So are there any tracts? Yes, let me get the color right. Tracts red. Nuclei. Hmm. Nuclei is gray matter. Fascicles. Hmm. The trigeminal nerve nuclei. The reticular formation is um, a scattered bundle of gray matter. So scattered nuclei, and they extend to different parts of the brain. So in this case, fascicles are uh, nuclei. So they're a kind of nuclei in the pawns. Okay. 
the peduncles, so we have a superior cerebellar, 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 and the middle cerebellar peduncles. So they connect the cerebellum to the pons. They connect the cerebellum to the pons and the midbrain. So they're a connecting kind of tissue. Not like connecting tissue, but connecting structures, I should say. The pons, connecting to the cerebellum. The cerebellum, a couple of structures in the cerebellum are different, but have the same function as the cerebrum, uh, but they're called different names for whatever reason. So the vermis, for example, is the connecting tissue, the connecting tissue between the two hemispheres. The folds are not called gyri, gyri, they're called folia because they look like foliage. So a lot of, or some of the structures anyway of the cerebellum refer to um, foliage or trees. So inside, for example, the white matter, the axons, the tracts of axons are known as arbor, Vitae, which means branching. So, cerebellar functions. Uh, we've already talked about some of them. Mm. Muscle coordination. So coordination and locomotor ability, muscle coordination. And spatial perception. There is a timekeeping center to predict the movement of objects. Even distinguishing pitch of similar sounding words like rabbit or rabid. So your cerebellum functions in distinguishing very similar sounding words, interestingly. Uh, planning and scheduling tasks, and even some uh, judgment. and memory and emotion. So that wouldn't be the main function, but that is one of the functions. Um, a couple of structures I'd like to talk about to describe its location a little better. Um, so the surface folds called folia and there are deep gray nuclei. We won't get into the names of all of the nuclei. Um, and arbor vitae, I think we've discussed those already. So one thing that's interesting too about the cerebellum is that it can detect fine differences between, between things. So say for example, if you have a pencil in one hand and you have something else like say a mouse pad in the other hand, when you're, when you're trying to determine their texture, it's your cerebellum comes into play there. It's like, this is a smooth texture. This is a rougher kind of texture. So the fine uh, touch uh, receptors in your fingertips, they, they distribute their signals to the cerebellum so that you can distinguish the texture of the shape of those things. Oh, I know what I wanted to say there. So 
yeah, it's a, it's a small part of the brain. So it's 10% the mass of the brain, but holds 50% of all the neurons of the brain. So it's an extremely important structure. So how many is that? Well, I don't think anybody really knows exactly, but 100 billion or so. The midbrain. A couple of things I want to talk about. The central gray matter. The tectum. The tegmentum. And the substantia nigra. So these are all um, um, nuclei of the midbrain. The tegmentum. Let's write this under functions of the midbrain. So the tegmentum is a nucleus. Um, it helps very fine movements. For example, the substantia nigra sends inhibitory signals. to the basal ganglia in the brain, in the cerebrum, and the thalamus in the cerebrum. And degeneration of this area leads to tremors. It's the disease of this area that um, is called Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease, which is degeneration of that area, including the substantia nigra. Uh, the tectum is a little more complicated. The tectum has four nuclei. And remember, nuclei are masses of gray matter. And gray matter is what? What is gray matter? What does it consist of? The part, parts of the neurons. Good, yeah, cell bodies. And yeah, the neurosoma, which is also a cell body. That's another word for it, soma. Good, another word for cell body. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And um, what, what extends from the cell body is called, starts with a D. Dendrites, good, yeah. So that's what nuclei are, just to um, remind you of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So these four nuclei are called corpora, Quadrigemina. It's quite fun to say, quadrigemina. Quadrigemina. So they are responsible for things like uh, blinking, pupillary, and head turning reflexes. So reflexes in the head, say 
moving to a sound or moving your head toward a sound would be triggered there. Also, um, in particular, I guess we'll write that down. Turning head toward sound. And the central gray matter conveys pain awareness. to the brain. Sorry, I'm trying not to scroll too fast <laughs> so they can have time to write it down. Okay. Um, Ms. Morgan, sorry. Yes. Is the central gray matter part of the four nucleus? No, it is not. That's a good question. Oh. Now let's draw a line there. Yeah. So the tectum is the four nuclei called corpora quadrigemina. Good, thank you. Okay. So here's the central gray matter here. Yeah. Uh, the tectum is here. This is the tegmentum. And the red, red nucleus, they, they actually are related. And the substantia around both sides is there. So we talked about the reticular formation. These are um, clusters of gray matter scattered throughout the pons, the midbrain, and a medulla, and they relay signals to the cortex. Uh, they regulate such things as balance and posture, So they relay information from uh, the eyes and ears to the cerebellum. I'll make this a point under balance and posture. Relay information from eyes and ears. the cerebellum, because the cerebellum has to adjust itself depending on uh, what that information is. Like, are you starting to tip over? Um, so why from your ears? Why does your cerebellum care about what's going on in your ears? You can understand your eyes. I'm looking at the horizon right now. I can see that it's straight. If I tip, that's gonna change how the, the horizon looks to me. Yeah, liquid in the ears, exactly. So uh, the vestibular um, area of the ears, the vestibule, that is where the liquid resides. And it gives you an idea of whether you're upright or not, whether you're lying down. And that's why, um, for example, you, if you're on a ship, I don't know, does anybody ever get seasick? or motion sickness? Has everybody ever had that? 
So if you have, uh, sometimes that's because when you're on a ship, you're, you're getting different information. Your cerebellum is getting different information about uh, from your eyes and your ears. So your, the liquid in your ears is moving around. Your eyes aren't giving your brain the same information. So you get sick because your brain interprets that as like, oh, maybe there's something wrong. Um, this, this seems to be wrong information. So your brain gets confused and you get sick to try and rectify the situation. Um, it also regulates the reticular formation, regulates uh, sleep and conscious attention. So those are the main functions. There are some other functions. Let's look at, if you're ready, the diencephalon which includes the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and the epithalamus. So the thalamus has a whole bunch of nuclei. This table shows the thalamic nuclei. So uh, what to remember about the thalamus? Mm -hmm. Well, let me write some notes about the thalamus. Uh, we know that sensory information gets uh, edited in the thalamus. So that, that's the main thing. So you can see here in these different groups of nuclei. Um, well, one of them is part of the limbic system in memory and emotion. Um, some of groups send this emotional output to the cortex. But a large part of somesthetic sensation goes through the thalamus. So these are, this is somesthetic output and visual signals as well, auditory signals as well. So let me write that in just a succinct kind of matter. The thalamus. The thalamus is uh, an oval mass of gray matter. So it's all nuclei. It protrudes into ventricles. There are 23 nuclei receiving sensory information. That is on its way to the cerebral cortex. So through um, habituation, where you get used to a sensory input and don't respond to it anymore because it's not necessary, that is a function of the thalamus. So uh, the thalamus only transmits Um, necessary sensory signals to be dealt with with the cerebral cortex. Uh, 
Um, so signals for taste. So that's a, that's a special sense in the head, but also the general senses like uh, touch. Smell, hearing, equilibrium. These are all senses. Uh, vision, pain, pressure. So collectively, we could call those collectively called special senses. and general senses. General senses are those that are distributed throughout the body. So things like touch and pressure and special senses are those that are concentrated in the brain like vision and hearing. The hypothalamus part of the diencephalon protrudes or is underneath, I shouldn't say it protrudes, it's underneath the thalamus. The hypothalamus. It is the it is the floor and the walls of the third ventricle. And this is where the hypothalamus can monitor the body's fluid. Sorry, it's on the floor or it is the floor? It is the floor. Yeah, it is the floor and the walls of the third ventricle. Um, so the main function of the hypothalamus there are some nuclei called mammillary bodies. They contain uh, three or four nuclei. They relay signals from the limbic system to the thalamus. So uh, the limbic system will, will be transmitting some signals about emotions and memory and hormones. But for the most part, the hypothalamus controls the endocrine and autonomic nervous system. So the main function to control the endocrine or endocrine, that's the system of hormones, the distribution of and function of hormones, and the autonomic nervous system, that's the involuntary nervous system we'll talk about in the next chapter, the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic systems, also known as fight or flight or rest and digest. So that is the main function. Collectively, you could call it uh, homeostatic regulation. Homeostatic regulation. Uh, so the regulation, for example, of sleep, waking and sleeping the regulation of electrolytes in the body, 
uh, pH, temperature, the regulation of temperature, uh, the regulation of food and water, hunger and thirst. Those are regulated through the hypothalamus. Uh, also emotional behavior and sexual response occurs through the hypothalamus. One more thing, the epithalamus. The epithalamus consists of the pineal gland, and sometimes it's just called the pineal gland, but, but it does have um, a structure called the hebanula uh, that connects the um, limbic system to the midbrain. The pineal gland was called the seat of the soul by Rene Descartes. Uh, what it does is it receives information about light or dark. Is it light or is it dark in your general vicinity? And it produces melatonin in response. It's the only place in the body that produces melatonin. to regulate sleep in response to dark. 